Hello friends, welcome back. Take a seat, you probably already sat down, aren't you? Don't worry about it. Welcome to the James Lawrence Talcott channel and this video where we will be ranking England attacking midfielders. But in particular, we're going to make it very, very clear. Four players, so much talk about the likes of Mason Mount, Jack Grealish, James Madison and Phil Foden. And so those for me are the four contenders for that attacking midfield role. And that's what we're going to do in this video. We're going to take it to the next level. And we're going to compare these guys in the following criteria. Shooting and goal creation, defensive output and team play. One element that is not going to be in this video but was in the last video where I was ranking England strikers was the Alcott eye test. The reason for that is because my England 11, that video, is coming out next week on the channel. So if you don't want to miss out on that video and if you want to get me... If you want to get me to 100k, we're getting very close now, currently at 92k, then please do me a favour and subscribe to the channel. It's been an amazing few months on the channel and I really do appreciate it, but I really do want those three numbers. I really do. It'd be amazing. So do what you can for me. If you've enjoyed the content so far, then please move the mouse and click the subscribe button. And that way, when I do drop my England 11, you'll be notified as soon as it drops. Gareth Salke has been quite quite clear so far in how he has wanted to play, which has been playing three at the back. Will he change that? I don't know. But just to highlight what kind of positions Grealish, Madison, Mount and Foden are battling it out for. Let's show you the formations that they've been using so far for England recently. They've used this formation four times. Three, four, two, one. So you've got two positions there at the moment. Mount and Grealish are in that for this for this last game that they played. Um, another formation that they've used is a three, four, Three Again, this was one that would... I don't think they're going to go down this route. And the reason I don't think they go down this route is because you're trying to get one of these four players into the team, surely, when you've got that kind of quality. So I don't see us having those two holding uh, midfielders, like you've seen at Chelsea, actually, this season uh, quite a bit. But I guess you might use it here. But again, we've got Sterling, we've got Rashford, we've got all of this quality. I'd be surprised if this would be the formation that he used. And then another formation that he used is this one here, 4-1-4-1. Four, one, four, one. This would have Declan Rice sitting a bit deeper. It's kind of a bit similar to the first one that was showed because you're going to have these two wide players and then two players here. One that's maybe a bit of a hybrid midfielder and then that final attacking midfielder. So the point I'm trying to make here is that the composition is rife and even the formations, there's there's such a, a, a variant that you're seeing from Gareth Southgate. So it really is all up for grabs, be it one position or two positions out of these four. Right, let's kick off with shooting and goal creation. Within that, we've got five categories and Within those five categories, we've ranked the guys from first to fourth. If you finish top, you get four points. If you finish last, you get one point, obviously two and three in between. And then we've added them all up to give them a final score within shooting and goal creation. The five categories are non-penalty XG per 90, non-penalty goals per 90, expected assists per 90, shot creating actions per 90, and live passes that created a shot per 90. Two players dominated in this category, Phil Foden and Jack Grealish. When it came to non-penalty XG per 90, Phil Foden was out in front, 0.35 goals per 90. He was a long way ahead of uh, next in line, which was actually James Madison in this uh, area of it in terms of non-penalty XG. In terms of non-penalty goals per 90, actually going and getting those goals. Again, he was at the top with 0.44. Once again, James Madison in second place in those two. And actually, James Madison was pretty middling throughout this. The second player that dominated was the one that we expected. It was Jack Grealish, who is <laughs> his output. You know, you can say whatever you want and you can say I'm a bit of a fanboy, but I'm a fanboy for a reason. Reason. Expected assists, he was on 0.3. The next best was 0.25. Again, James Madison in second place there. Shot creating actions, 5.54 per game. A long way ahead of everyone else there as well. And live passes that create a goal, 4.64. Next best was Mason Mount with 2.7. And I've, I've got to just show you this. I've got to show you on FB Ref just how impressive he is in this element of the game. So this is player goal and shot creation on FB Ref. These are stats for the five top leagues, ranking people in the top five leagues, okay? Shot creating actions. Let's see where Jack Grealish is. Third in Europe. For Aston Villa, who are, you know, pushing for Europe, but are mid-table. Shot creating actions, down to sixth on that one. But live passes, creating things himself. Not from dead balls, but from live passing. He's second in Europe. Only Lionel Messi is next to him. And Bruno Fernandes, and, and talk about how great Bruno Fernandes is, is. 
Jack Grealish, his numbers are exactly the same. It's unbelievable. He really is that good when it comes to this element of the game. Mason Mount struggled in this category. Shot creating actions, he finished third. Live passes that create shots, he finished second with 2.7 per 90. But in terms of non-penalty XG and his non-penalty goals, full stop per 90 and expected assists, he finished last out of all three of them. But what I think is important to highlight with all of these guys, because Foden, same kind of thing, although he dominates in the first two, in the last two, in terms of shot creating actions and live passes that create goals as well, he's actually last. So as I go through this list, there is always these caveats and pinches of salt that need to be applied because of the style of the team and the player's style within that team. The best way that I can showcase this is through the heat maps. Uh, as you can see here, Foden, Grealish, Madison and Mount. And Foden and Grealish, in terms of their expected goals and their goals per 90, they are a lot closer to the goal a lot more often. Grealish, in fact, actually has uh, the most carries into the penalty box in any of the top five leagues. And Foden is always up there. If you think about the amount of defensive work that he's got to do as someone who's supposedly a midfielder instead of a forward, it just highlights how much Man City dominate their games of football. But I guess with those shot creating actions, it also highlights how how spread out the kind of the, the creativity is with Man City. With Grealish, the focus is solely on him and, and he has that a little bit more of a free role. Of course, he has to defend a little bit more because Aston Villa need to defend a little bit more. Madison has a, a bit more of a, a central role and he's a proper, bit more of a proper midfielder. You can see that he's trying to get into the box a little bit more so this season than he has in previous seasons. But he is that creator from outside the box because you've got the likes of Vardy inside the box and Mason Mount really is just an unbelievable box-to-box -box midfielder really as much as he is an attacking midfielder I think Grealish you can see that free role that he has there but Mason Mount getting himself into the bo penalty box as you can see here but also dropping deep and being ready to help them out as well and this this heat map here with with Mount it, it's interesting it shows that both Foden, Grealish and Mount are all a lot more comfortable on that left hand side but it also highlights that Mount is probably doing a lot more defensive work which is highlighted when we move on to the next category. Within defensive output and it is so important especially for a team like England that if we go deeper into the tournament you're going to get to the semi-finals you're going to play a Belgium or a France or a Germany or a Spain and you're going to have to be able to kind of press the opposition and win the ball back it's going to be integral. OK, so four categories, pressures per 90, tackles per 90, interceptions per 90. And then we put those two together, tackles and interceptions per 90 in terms of an overall defensive output per 90. There was one person who dominated this and it was the exact person that we expected. When we see the styles of the play, when we see the heat maps, it's Mason Mount who finished on top on all four. Pressures per 90, 20 0.94. Next best is Madison with 15. Foden's got 15 as well. And Grealish, 12.64, highlighting that free roll. Tackles per 90, 2.15. Miles ahead of the others again. Interceptions per 90, 1.6. And of course, when you add up those two together, you're going to get 3.21 tackles and interceptions per 90. Completely dominant when it comes to defensive output as an attacking midfielder. And if you do think of him in that Chelsea team, that is the role that he plays. And so it is right that we are talking about him as an attacking midfielder because that might be an option for England. You might go, let's have that stability of Henderson and Declan Rice and play one other. And if you need that energy and you want to press, then Mason Mount highlights this. In fact, Mason Mount is actually 10th on the list in terms of the top five leagues when it comes to pressures and pressures per 90. When it came to pressures per 90, both Madison and Foden were pretty close, 15.32 and 15.92. Grealish way off with 12.94, again, highlighting that, that, that free roll that he has. One thing that did surprise me a little bit, James Madison, 0.49, finished bottom when it came to interceptions per 90. Is that because he is that little bit deeper in that midfield? And so when you're in the central areas, actually the teams play around the side and so he's not able to get the same amount of interceptions. I don't know. Tackles, he finished second out of the, the four of them. And again, Grealish 0.94 finished last in that one and last in the accumulation of tackles and interceptions per 90. Foden, again, like Madison, does offer some output in terms of interceptions. He finished second there, 0.77, which is a lot higher than James Madison at 0.49. And with tackles at 1.17, not a million miles off Madison there either. But there's only one person we could talk about when it comes to the defensive output. Mason Mount is your guy. So when you're comparing these four guys, and we move into the final round here, team play. It's so tight because you've got such an all-rounder in Madison. You've got that defensive output of Mount. You've got the attacking output of Grealish. And Foden, again, 
who's, who's in the middle of all of it. He's got a complete attacking midfielder. But we're moving to team play, and we've got four categories once again. Progressive passes, dribbles completed, progressive carries, and passes under pressure. Now, again, there are so many different ways that you could critique these guys, but I'm focusing on the position of attacking midfield and what I want to see from players in that position. So that's why we've gone with these four. And one player jumps to the top again. You know, defensively, yes, very poor in comparison to the other guys here. But Jack Grealish, top of the table with all four. Progressive passes, 5.85. Dribbles completed, 2.16. Progressive carries, 11.61. And 11.61 <laughs> progressive carries. The next best is Foden with 7. 7.86. Mount, 7.37. Madison down the bottom with 5.94. Again, Madison, a different kind of player. And maybe there's a, there's a place for that, right? In terms of someone who gets the ball and plays it quickly. But for me, in attacking midfield, I want someone who can dribble past players because I think it's just so integral. And 11.61, it's just insane. This, these are the numbers. They're there right in front of me. And passes under pressure. I think that's a good one as well because... Jack Grealish is top of that as one as well, eight point seven seven, and I think that that makes up for me a lot of this element that defensively he's not really offering as much to the team as these other guys. Because if you aren't going to have that side of it and you're going to have that freedom, then you need to be the out ball. You need to be able to get yourself out of out of pressure. Phil Foden is a bit of a victim to the style of play of Man City when it comes to this progressive passes, three point three eight per game, long way off the the next best or worst, which is Madison at 4.3. Mason Mount with a lot more progressive passes and 5.16, which is just under Grealish at 5.85. And again, same thing happens when it comes to passes under pressure for Foden. Only 6.38 is the bottom of those, which is actually pretty tight when it comes to the passes under pressure. But he's down the bottom because the teams do stay off uh, Man City a lot of the time. Madison was a bit of a disappointment for me, comparatively, uh, when it came to this. Progressive passes, 4.3. Dribbles completed, 1.35. Way off the other guys. Again, and maybe that's a stylistic thing. Progressive carries down at the bottom by a lot as well. 5.94. The next worst being Mason Mount at 7.37. And second to last with passes under pressure. But again, I must add that when it came to passes under pressure, all of them were pretty strong, apart from Grealish, who was next level right having gone through all three of those crunched all the numbers crunched all the numbers so after all of that i've put it in this graph and it's really interesting because you've got the total points in that first column the second column is their rank and then the third column is the points that they're getting for finishing first second third or fourth and the winner for the total points is actually different to the winner when it comes to ranking points okay so goal and shot creation Mason Mount finished in last place in that one. Jack Grealish was first. Madison was second. And Phil Foden was third. And uh, Jack Grealish way out in head. Mason Mount actually a long way behind when it came to goal and shot creation in terms of total points out of those five categories. Defensive output, though, Mason Mount was the best by a long way. Top in all of those different aspects of it and finished in top position. Grealish fourth position so you've got a swap there and actually you've got a bit of a swap when it comes to Madison and Foden as well Madison finishing third and Foden, Foden finishing in second and then team play Grealish back to the top but Mason Mount in second position interestingly Phil Foden in third position and James Madison in fourth position which leads us on to our final scores which are that when it comes to the total ranking point category one two and three and you add those up jack grealish is the winner his dominance in team play and shot and goal creation puts him top of that list in second position mason mount in third position phil foden and in fourth position james madison but then when we look at the total points in terms of an overall player both sides of the ball defensive and offensive and if you kind of fiddle that in out into the mean and again i think what's interesting here is that you need different horses for different courses so do you need full express goal and shot creation that's jack grealish but if you need a well-rounded player the best well-rounded player out of these four in terms of the numbers this season it has to be mason mount he's top with this one only by one point it was so tight 34 points in total for mason mount in second position jack grealish in 33 phil foden it highlights that he is a very well-rounded player as well with 32 points overall and james madison once again finishing fourth in both of these of course they're all fabulous players but comparatively it's interesting 
Grealish, Mount and Foden, again, all battling it out. But who do you think is the best player for England? I'm going to be doing my 11 next week on the channel. So if you don't want to miss that, do a couple of things for me, please. If you've enjoyed this video, hit that like button. It, mass it massively helps. I honestly can't underestimate it. And of course, we're trying to get ourselves to 100K as soon as possible. So if you are feeling generous today, please do move that mouse. Cost you nothing. Click that button and subscribe. Let's get ourselves to 100K. Be in the group before we hit 100K. Go on, do it. Uh, right, I'll see you guys very, very soon. Hope you've enjoyed it.